Good morning. Not quite looking like Easter Sunday in here, but it's still Easter. We have a whole season, seven Sundays of Easter, and so we will continue to celebrate the risen Lord each one of these Sundays. So today I'd like to read you a little description of the day, the third Sunday of Easter. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Paul writes, Today Christ is risen. We celebrate that still. We gather together in astonishment and joy. Christ is risen and we have been set free from the bonds of death. Christ is risen and we are forgiven. Christ is risen and with the women at the tomb, with Peter and all the disciples, we praise the risen Christ. So let us rejoice that Christ is risen. Do we have any visitors today? that we need to recognize. We're glad to see the ones here who are here. Oh yeah, we have Mallory and Presley, who are Brennan's sisters. Yeah, glad to have you girls back there. Uh, tomorrow, here's a little rundown of what's coming up. First of all, today after service at noon, we will have our confirmation class. On next Sunday, it's Mother's Day. Don't forget to do something good for your mom. If you bring her to church, that'd be great, or go to church with her, but do something for your mom next week, or some other special lady in your life, your wife, your daughter, somebody. Uh, the annual, semi-annual congregation meeting is going to be May 15th, so that's two weeks from today. Try to be here, it won't be too long. And June the 5th is the big confirmation day for our confirmands. Try to be here and support them. It's also Pentecost Sunday that day. Bible study is tomorrow at 11, and every time you see me here on Sunday, we have Bible study the next Monday at 11, and you're all welcome. And there will be Sunday school for the kids today, and I think next week as well, and the kids are planning something to surprise the moms next week. So come next week and have a surprise, when all you women. Anything else we need to announce? Oh, Katie's um, piano students are having a recital today at 2 o'clock, so she said if you want to be highly entertained, come and watch. Any other special words, Katie? Yeah, okay, she said it's not a high-end recital, it's a fun recital singing and playing and sing and uh, <laughs> little ones, they'll be sure to entertain you. So I never forget some of the ones I went to with my kids. My, I have to tell you this quick story. My daughter's first recital, she was four. And she got on the bench and she, her feet didn't touch the ground or anything. She's swinging her legs. She was the first one on the program. And she sat there and she sat there and she sat there. And finally, she looked at me and she said, <laughs> Do I start now, Mom? I was like, yes, please. <laughs> please start. She wasn't sure, you know, if she should wait for something. I don't know. But anyway, she, she sat there for a good while before we finally got the recital going. She learned, though. So um, let's please say together our mission statement for Holy Trinity. We, the people of Holy Trinity, are called to glorify God by building vibrant relationships with Jesus and joyfully sharing his message with others. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And I invite you to share the peace with those people around you. Wave, give them a, a smile if you can, or let them know you're glad for them to be here. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together today. Thank you that you have given us your word and sacrament and you call us to share these things with others. Thank you for revealing yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Give us an open heart and a willing mind to listen and actions to do your will. In your name we pray these things. Amen. Our prelude this morning is dedicated to us being able to return to communion every Sunday with our precious Lord and Savior. 
We had to give that up during our COVID, and now we will have communion every Sunday. Please stand. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. 
You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, and wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen. And we will sing Gather Us In. changing the place of the children's sermon. Would all you kids come down? Good morning. Well, so today we are going to do a blessing. Do you know what a blessing is? prayer. It's a good word. Yeah, we say a good word for something. We have been collecting coins in little piggy banks, a little pink piggy banks. Miss Linda gave them to us 
And so I'm going to ask you guys to go back to the back, and a lady there is going to hand you some of the piggy banks. If any of you brought your pink piggy bank back, hold it up and let the kids pick it up when they walk by. If you didn't bring it, well, any time is fine. But go back there where you came from with Miss Vicki, and she, they're going to give you a pink piggy to bring down here. Okay? Can you go get it? Okay, everybody go get a piggy. Don't run. Yeah. Down with Miss Vicki. There you go. I kept mine in my office so I couldn't forget it. So these, uh, this money that we have collected is going to go to Lutheran World Relief. Well, I read in the newsletter that we have already collected something like $1,100 from Lutheran World Relief to help, I think, the people in Ukraine that are undergoing a lot of homelessness and need food, shelter, and clothing, all the life necessities. So these pink piggies are going to Lutheran World Relief. And we're going to see if we can get them herded this way. <laughs> Come on, guys. Thank you. Okay, can you put the pigs up here on the altar rail? Can you set them up there? There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's yours. Oh, okay. You brought that one? Good. You want to set yours up there too? We got these pigs all corralled so they won't get away. Yeah. Oh. One of them's heavy. It's got some coins in it. Yeah. Nickels, dimes, pennies, and quarters. Uh, this is for other people. It's not for us, okay? Yeah. These are for other people today. Okay. Now, we're going to say some good words. Now, these piggy banks, are, this money out of the piggy banks is going to go around the world to help other people that are in need of food, clothing, shelter, all of life's necessities. So what do you think would be a good word to say before we send these off? help the people, maybe? These little pigs are going to help the people get what they need. We can thank God for the money. Anything else? We could ask God to bless the people. Not only the money to help the people, but to bless the people with, with uh, confidence that God is with them. And also we could ask God to bless the people that gave them. Because you know, with jobs, you're so right about that. That's a but good. But I don't have that much money. You're you're right. Okay, gotta have a job if you want to make money. That's very good, kid. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now, so let's say a prayer for this money in the piggy banks to do good things. Let's close our eyes. I'm gonna bless the piggy banks. I'm gonna. You want to put your hand up here on one of the piggies to give it a blessing before we go? Okay, you want to put your hand up there, Lucy? That'd be great. Do any of you others want to put your hand up on the piggy? Okay. You want to put your hand on a piggy? Okay. Put your hand on a piggy. Do you want to, Mary? Anybody else? Okay. Put your hand on the piggy while we pray. You can't see them. Well, they're secret in there. They're hidden. Okay. Oh, you can. Let's pray. Okay. Let's close our eyes and pray. And you can repeat after me. Thank you, God, for the people. Okay, thank you, God, for the people. Can you repeat after me? Thank you, God, for the people that gave these gifts, that gave these gifts. Bless them for their generosity. Bless them for their generosity. And thank you for the people who are in need that we're able to help. Thank you for the people in need that we are able to help. Bless them with your love. And concern. and concern, and be with them always. Be with them always. We pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you, guys. Let's leave the little piggies there. They're going to get mailed off. Time for Sunday school.
Please stand. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let's sing in English. exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up. O oh Lord, from the dead, you restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness, for his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed, you, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. 
dancing, you have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O oh Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. reading from Acts. Saul, later called Paul, was an ardent persecutor of all who followed the way of Christ. This reading recounts the story of his transformation, beginning with an encounter with Jesus Christ on the way to Damascus. The reading begins. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are perse persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were opened, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen a vision, a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many things about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he, is, here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all those who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. The risen Christ appears again to his disciples by the sea, where they were first called. After echoes of the fishing and feeding miracle, he gives a final reminder of the cost of a disciple's love and obedience. And the gospel begins with verse 1. After he appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, 
Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, also called Galilee. He showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciple came in the boat, dragging the full net of fish, for they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Now, when they finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to them, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And please sit. Let's pray. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be a praise to your holy name always. Amen. Do any of you like to fish? Okay, my own husband's not going to raise his hand. Do any of you like to fish? <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's rod and reel or fly fishing or... or uh, good, okay, Kim likes to fish. Okay, when you go fishing, Kim, what is your goal? What is your goal? To catch fish. To catch fish, sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, today the disciples are back on the beach, but it's not a vacation. They've gone back to their old fishing jobs. Now, maybe they have given up on the resurrection life because they don't see Jesus all the time. Or uh, maybe now that Jesus has been resurrected, they just don't know what to do. Maybe they're, you know, at a loss. 
So they may think Jesus is not with them, even though they've had some sightings of Jesus before. So that's why they fall back into their old ways of fishing. And what happens is they catch nothing. Now, if you go fishing, and you definitely want to catch fish, and if you're not catching fish, well, that's a problem. And you'd like for that problem to get fixed, and so you try a different lure or a different bait or you try something you go to a different spot and we certainly we like to try to fix things with our old ways and so they're fishing back then they were throwing the net off the side and I read somewhere that that was the tradition they always threw the net off the left side but they keep on throwing it off the left and it is just not working they are catching nothing and I see this as a problem when we keep doing things our old way if it's not working maybe we need to try Jesus way in teaching we say if you always do what you've always done you'll always get what you always got if you're not if you're not getting what you want maybe you need to try something different well it's just after daybreak still kind of dark when Jesus stands on the beach today we call this text uh, breakfast on the beach this is the resurrected Jesus after the cross, so he may not look exactly as he did when he was in human form, but he's giving them another sighting of himself. Now, they're out about 100 yards out in the water. They aren't sure it's Jesus yet, but he gives them some very specific directions. He says, try throwing the net on the right side of the boat. It's simple, right? Throw it on the other side. But they hadn't thought about that. It was not the way they had always done it, you know, that famous saying, we've always done it like this. Yeah, it, it gives uh, some pastors a heartache sometimes. Um, but they hadn't thought about that. And then they tried Jesus' way, and good news, Jesus' way worked. Imagine that. Jesus' way worked. And he gives them an abundance of fish, so much fish. The nets were really dragging. His beloved disciple finally recognizes that this is the work of the Lord and he knows it's Jesus. And when Peter hears that, it's Jesus, he jumps in the boat. He's got to put on some clothes first. I don't know anybody who fishes naked, but evidently they didn't want to get their clothes wet, but he uh, put his clothes on and then jumped in the water and he swims to the shore while the others come along dragging the nets full of 153 large fish we don't know how big but that's it's a pretty detail 153 large fish meanwhile on the beach jesus already has the fire going and bread and though jesus has fish on it it says clearly he commands them to bring some of their fish now, if Jesus already has fish, why does he need their fish? Could it be that Jesus wants them to make a contribution? Or could it be that Jesus just wants them to take part in the ministry of feeding themselves? Or Jesus has expectations of the disciples and he expects them to share. So these followers are given a chance to share. Like we're given a chance to share when we do things like the piggy banks. And um, we do things like receive our offerings. We're given a chance to share. So what if those disciples that day had responded to Jesus? No, Lord, we really need to sell our fish to make a living. What if they had not shared the fish that day? I can imagine that this story would have ended a little bit differently they probably would have been reprimanded by our Lord, but they did share, and the story got recorded. But this is a story so rich in details. In fact, I listened to a commentator named Caroline Lewis, who I love, she's a teacher at Luther Seminary, and she pointed out a, a little detail I really hadn't paid much attention to. She said, notice that Nathaniel, the disciple from Cana, was there. Now, he's not one of the more famous disciples. We don't hear much about him. But if you study the book of John much, 
you'll remember that Nathaniel was at the wedding when Jesus turned the water into wine, and it was so much wine, and it was good wine, not just cheap wine. That there was an abundance of wine at that wedding, and that was at the very beginning of Jesus' preaching ministry. And now we are at the end of Jesus' preaching ministry, and Jesus gives them an abundance of fish. So we have an abundance of wine at the beginning, an abundance of fish at the end, and it's kind of like bookends. The disciple Nathaniel is there to remind us of the wedding at Cana and the abundance in both of these places that bookends Jesus' work in the book of John. Much wine, much fish. God is generous, above generous even, and he doesn't hold back. He doesn't even hold back his son given for us. Now, this story could be briefly summarized. You know, Jesus knows the disciples' problems. Yes, he does. The problem of no fish. And then Jesus gives them some directions, a new way of fishing. Throw on the other side. And then Jesus provides. He provides that large catch. And finally, Jesus expects them to share. So like four little things. Jesus knows the problems. Jesus gives them directions, Jesus provides lots of fish, and Jesus expects them to share. To share, not with Peter's sheep, but with Jesus' sheep. He claims the world as his sheep. So maybe we could apply these directions to our lives. Does Jesus come to us and expect us to know, to listen to his directions? He knows our problems already. Does he give us directions on how to live? Sure, they're right there in the Bible. Does he provide for us? Yes, we are provided for. Does he expect us to share? Yes. You might think about this personally today, but let's apply it to um, church life. Jesus knows the problems of the church. Jesus knows the problem of every single congregation everywhere. He knows. He knows attendance might be spotty. He knows we might have a hard time getting people involved in the ministry of the church. He knows that there might be unneeded financial worries. He knows about any disagreements we have. Jesus knows the church. But Jesus also gives us plenty of directions on how to do things if we only listen. He lived his life as our holy example and so if you don't read anything else in the Bible, I would suggest read the Gospels. Read the Gospels to know of Jesus' example, his stories. He goes out. He doesn't just sit in a building. He does go to worship weekly in the synagogue. But he doesn't stay in the building. He doesn't just go home and stay in his house. Jesus goes out. He goes out to be among the people on the fringe of society, the poor, the needy, the widowed, the blind, the sick, the homeless. Maybe Jesus' directions for the church will not be the way we've always done it. Maybe we'll have some new directions, but they will be Jesus' way. And then Jesus gives the church an abundance. Yes, we have members for doing ministry. We have visitors and uh, people who attend that also help us with ministry. We have many talents for different kinds of ministry. We're not all alike. We have the money, at least some money. We have some resources. And Jesus provides what Holy Trinity needs to go out and do the ministry. He provides our fish, so to speak. And then finally, Jesus has expectations for us too. Jesus invites us to bring some of our fish to share. And by fish, you know, I mean everything that we have, our time, our talents, our resources. Jesus gives you the talent and time to get involved in things in church that you might not have ever done. Maybe you like to work on World Relief Kits, or you like to work on building maintenance, or you enjoy being an acolyte. Then after a while, you may get tired of those things, and, and you realize a different ministry may be calling you. Maybe you feel uh, like you would like to work with Hope House and feeding the homeless, or you'd like to help with the gardening around the building, or you'd like to pick up trash, or help with Vacation Bible School. Keep following that ministry 
that Jesus gives you, that's part of your fish. Keep following your fish. Feed his sheep the way that Jesus directs us to. So this is the gospel today in a nutshell. Jesus knows our problems. Personally and as a congregation, Jesus gives us his directions by his example, and Jesus gives us an abundance. And then finally, Jesus expects us to share. The hard question uh, posed today is, will we keep on trying it our way and have nothing, or little, or we, will we try it God's way? This is the word of the Lord. Amen.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Catholic and ethic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One of new beginnings, fill us with new life. Send us into the world as you have sent your apostles, Philip and James, to invite people to come and see your wondrous acts in Christ. God, in your mercy. Revive ecosystems along coastlands that have been devastated by natural forces and human negligence. Reestablish plant and animal life that purifies air and water and that feeds humans and other living creatures. God, in your mercy. Accompany laborers who get little rest from their work. Give them hope and when they struggle to produce what they need. Give all who labor fair treatment and just wages. God, in your mercy. Restore all people who cry to you for help. Turn their mourning into dancing. Clothe them with joy and put a testimony of healing and praise on their lips. We pray especially for the Sweeney's family and those listed in your bulletin and those we name in our hearts and our minds. God, in your mercy. Be present to faithful ones who are persecuted for following you. Sustain them by your faithfulness and give them strength in the name of Jesus. God, in your mercy. God, be with us as we celebrate with those who have an anniversary of their birth or marriage this week, especially Colby Kidwell, David Hasse, Cole DeVay, Marsha Robinson, and Donnie and Vicki Men. God, in your mercy. Join our voices with angels, creatures, and all the saints in praising Christ and bestowing upon him all blessings and honor and glory. Reveal Christ's glory to us and through us in our worship. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O oh God, we lift up these prayers and the prayers of our heart. We ask you to renew us by your life-giving spirit through the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please sit as we offer our gifts to the Lord.
Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In a moment, we will take the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, and you're all welcome to come to the table. This is the Lord's table, and uh, the ushers will guide you. We will gather around the rail, and when you have finished communing, you may go back to your seat. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, he blessed it, and gave it for all to drink. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Teach us to pray, Lord, as your son prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We have our sighting of the risen Lord in this body and blood, in the cup and the bread, so all are welcome to take and see that the Lord is truly good. You may sit as the ushers uh, guide you.
Please stand. And now may this body and this blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bless you and keep you to eternal peace and send you out in his name sharing the good news of his love. Receive this blessing as you go. Now may God, the author of life, may Christ, the cornerstone, and may the holy life-giving spirit bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. So let's go out joyfully with our sending hymn. Uh, th that Easter day was with joy was bright.